Hi friends, today I will talk on cost and performance. So, cost and performance. These are the two important aspects of any data warehouse or database. So, let's see the same in Snowflake. So, what is cost in Snowflake? In general, what is meant by cost? It is the amount we have to pay for purchasing any item or for any service. The same in Snowflake. So the cost here is the charges for using Snowflake warehouse. There are two types of costs in Snowflake. The first one is storage cost and second one is compute cost. Let's see in detail what is meant by storage cost and compute cost. What is storage cost? In general, in any database or data warehouse, there will be charges for storing the data. Here in Snowflake, it is same. Storage cost is nothing but the charges we pay for storing the data. Here, the charges calculated based on the average storage per month and the charges calculated on compressed data storage. So 10 TB compressed storage is different than 10 TB normal storage. So here the charges applied on the compressed storage, not the normal storage. And there are two types of storage. One is on-demand storage, uh, which is nothing but we have to pay for the storage we are using. This is like a postpaid approach. The second one is capacity storage. So here we have to purchase the storage and then use it. It is like prepaid service. We have to pay before purchasing the storage. Uh, here in Snowflake, the charges are less for capacity storage when compared to the on-demand storage. So we have to decide which storage will be suitable for our project and we'll discuss in the next uh, slides. Now, what is compute cost? In Snowflake, compute cost charged in Snowflake credits. Snowflake credits charge when the warehouse is active. That means when the queries are running in the warehouse, for that period, the credits will be consumed. Here, the credit will be consumed per seconds. But if the query is running for 1 minute and seconds, 1 minute and 10 seconds, the credits will be calculated for 2 minutes. So even though it, it get billed in seconds, it will be charged for all minute. And the final billing will be calculated at the end of the month. That means the number of credits consumed in that month. And in Snowflake, the cost depends on mainly four things. The Snowflake edition we are using, the Snowflake region where the account was created and the cloud provider. So there are different costs for Azure, Google Cloud and for AWS Cloud. And the cost depends on warehouse size also. So the size varies from XS to 6XL. And the cost depends also on the number of clusters we are using. And what is the performance? Performance is nothing but the time taken by a query to complete, like in any database. So if query is taking less time to complete, that means it is performing good and obviously the cost will be less. But if the query is taking long time to complete, that means that indicates the bad performance. Obviously, it leads to more cost. Snowflake offers some inbuilt performance optimization in the form of micro partitions, cluster keys, scale up and scale out and result sketchy. Let's see what how it will affect the cost and performance in the next slides. And now cost or performance. So we cannot compromise on performance for cost savings at the same time. We cannot spend too much money for better performance. So the question comes up here is like cost or performance. Obviously both are important but 
if you don't know the cost aspects and performance aspects together you may spend lot of money in snowflake so let's see some cost optimization techniques and performance optimization techniques in snowflake cost optimization in snowflake so before doing any cost optimization in snowflake first we have to analyze the storage cost and compute cost for a period of time then go for the cost optimization techniques and when it comes to addition we have to choose appropriate addition of snowflake either business critical addition or enterprise addition because the cost depends on the addition as earlier i discussed and when it comes to the storage first we do when we start the project we don't know how big our data storage will be so let's start with the on demand storage pay for on demand storage then once the environment is stabilized and all the data gets integrated to the database then go for capacity storage based on our requirements and the next thing is very important so we have to choose warehouse size and number of clusters based on the environment so when it comes to the dev environment there will be no batch loads or continuous loads in the dev environment mostly this is for all our dev work so here we can choose very small size warehouse which is excess with up to one or two clusters and when it comes to test we have we can choose again the least uh, when it comes to test environment we can choose excess with uh, four clusters or we can choose a small warehouse with two clusters but in the production there will be continuous loads and batch loads so we have to choose proper sized warehouse like medium or large and we have to decide the number of clusters based on our query loads and we have to take the decision based on the queries we are running so if we are running many small queries then we have to choose smallest size warehouse with more number of clusters so that we can avoid queuing of queries but if we are running few big queries on large data sets then so with a small warehouse we cannot run large we cannot run queries on the large data sets so better to choose the large size warehouse with less number of clusters at the same time if we are using if we are running many big queries then we don't have a choice we have to choose the large size with more number of clusters so these are some of the cost optimization techniques in snowflake and let's see some more in the next slide and when it comes to table types we have to choose appropriate table types based on our requirement suppose for storing the stage table data we can go with transient tables because there will be no time travel cost and fail safe cost and in future if we want to retrieve the same data we can get it from source again so for staging it's always best best practice to use the transient tables and for intermediate data processing also we can use the transient tables because again we don't need time travel cost and fail safe cost on transient tables and use less data retention periods so in enterprise edition and business critical edition it supports time travel up to 90 days but based on the requirement you choose appropriate retention period like a week or 10 days or 30 days if you use more data retention period then the cost will be more and when it comes to cloning use cloning effectively so what is cloning we can maintain multiple copies of same table with no additional cost so if you want to take backup don't create the table but clone the table by using the clone command and turn off the time travel before dropping a table or database and if you are sure any table or database is no more required 
then just turn off the time travel before dropping the table if you don't do that even though you drop a table or database there will be storage cost associated because of the time travel defined and make use of the results cache if we are querying the same data so when you run the same query on database it will fetch the data from results cache make use of this feature to optimize the cost and to avoid the full table scan every time and there is one more feature to use auto suspend so we have to define we have to define auto suspend timeouts based on the query frequency and now let's see some performance optimization techniques in the next slide performance optimization in snowflake so along with some built in features in snowflake we have to follow some best practices to achieve performance in snowflake the first one is defining the cluster keys it is suggested that don't define cluster keys on small tables and always define cluster keys on large tables and even in the large tables define the cluster keys on the columns we are using in filters and on the columns we are using in the using as join keys and if we are using any functions in the filters or join keys then define the cluster keys on those functions and coming to the materialized views we have to use materialized views effectively because they are most cost oriented in snowflake so there are two techniques in using the materialized views so use materialized views on more frequently accessed tables because the queries query results will be stored in a separate table and when you run the same query next time the results we can access in very less time and if the underlying data is uh, getting changed frequently on any tables then do not create materialized views on those tables so these are the two techniques we have to use for creating materialized views in snowflake let's see some more performance optimization techniques and these are some common sql tuning techniques in any database like uh, selecting only the required columns and replacing r with union whenever possible and use union all instead of union if you are sure there are no duplicates on the data sets and try avoiding inequality with r condition whenever you are performing some r conditions it is suggested do not use not equals to symbol or not in conditions and we have to avoid unnecessary joins in snowflake and we have to avoid using distinct if we are sure there are no duplicates on the data so finally what is the conclusion cost or performance no no cost with performance high performance with very less cost in snowflake thank you friends